The great founder of Crossroads Ministry, David Maines, is an evangelist. Billy Graham is an evangelist. And we have an evangelist here today. His name is Jay Louder from Wichita Falls, Texas. But not any ordinary evangelist. We have a special bond, don't we, Jay? Uh, yes, we do. And you came from a background, when I bring up the word suicide, it resonates with you, doesn't it? Absolutely. Let's look at this clip and he'll tell you why. With all the pressure you're facing, it's no wonder you've thought about it. Maybe you've put together a couple of scenarios in your mind. From overdosing to just taking a gun and ending it all. I've been there. In fact, I had the barrel pointed to the side of my head when something, when someone stopped me. I'd like to tell you about it. Jay, you said I've been there. What did that mean? It meant getting to a place of complete hopelessness, a place where I felt like there was no other options, a place where it seemed the only way out to escape all the pain was to end my life. And you know, as we tell your story, I want to remind our Crossroads family that we have presented a book called Why They Die, Curing the Death Wish in Our Kids. We want to make it available to you for your donation to Crossroads Ministry. This book, nearly 10,000 units are all over Canada now. But let me also tell you that we have a special teen version you've never seen before called Not Suicide. This is that special version for you to give free. And so we're asking you for your special donation to get a quantity of them, 50, 100, 500. Give one to every kid in your high school, middle school, your youth group. Please do. Now, Jay, you know, I, I, I love evangelists because I'm an evangelist. Take us back to your story, how you and I connected and where it was and what happened before that night, everything turned around. Well, just a few months before the evangelistic outreach in our city where you were coming, a roommate of mine had recently met Christ. He came home one night and he said, things are going to be different. We're not going to be, I'm not going to be doing the things with you that we normally do. And uh, he told me that he'd become a Christian. I thought it would be something that would pass in a few weeks, something that he would get over. I actually told him it wouldn't last. But I could get, begin to see a real change in his life. I mean, there was something beyond just that he was now going to church. I could see an interchange that was working its way outwardly. And so uh, right prior to that, I, I had gotten to that place where I felt like suicide was the only option. And it took out a 22 caliber pistol to end my life. I was actually sitting on the sofa with the gun pointed to the side of my head when my roommate came home from work early. He works for Dell Computer in, uh, in Austin, Texas. He would tell you if he were here today that in all the years he worked for his father, he got off work early one day. And it was that day that I was sitting there on my sofa with a gun about to end my life. And uh, I guess it was just a matter literally of weeks before the crusade was taking place in my home city. I didn't, wasn't really interested in going to a crusade. I didn't know obviously who you were. I'd been invited, but pretty much dismissed it as it's not really something that I want to do. I mean, even though I went to church when I was younger, uh, going to church was the last thing on my mind. But at the last minute, I had some plans with a, a close friend that fell through. I drove up in the parking lot and was actually sitting in the parking lot uh, drinking alcohol, debating as to whether or not I should walk in. I decided I'd walk in late. I'd leave early. No one would know that I ever went. And uh, I walked in. And the time I walked in and sat down, you got off the seat and walked up to begin speaking. And I was completely captured. I was just completely taken in by the power of the gospel. And the irony of all this is if you would have asked me if I was a Christian, I could have given all the answers. I mean, growing up in a Christian home and, and uh, had a, a, a belief, but, but not a, a belief of repentance, not a belief of true faith. It was an intellectual belief and got under great conviction. And actually, you said that night, there are some of you that if you don't receive Christ tonight, there may never be another opportunity. And I so clearly heard in my heart and in my spirit, Jay, this is it for you. You've had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and you've pushed me away. You've wanted to live your own life, doing your own thing. And I, and I just folded and uh, really realized 
the facade of the life that I've been living, really realized the wickedness of the life that I've been living, and realized that not only was Christ salvation, but he was going to be life, life that I was looking for. And so that night I met the king. I mean, I really met him. It wasn't just uh, a matter of a church thing or a denominational thing. God came in my life and he invaded who I was. Matter of fact, so much so I remember, uh, it so sticks with me because when I first uh, told my mother, I waited a few days because I didn't want her to, I didn't want to let her down. I didn't realize at the time that God was truly going to give me the power to overcome some of the addictions in my life. And so that's why I didn't initially tell her. But about a week and a half, two weeks later, my mom walked up to me one day and she said, I don't even know who you are. You're, you're not even the same person. You're not the same son that I've raised for 21 years. I mean, God had just completely. And so the suicide impulse was gone. Literally just <clears throat> disappeared overnight. Now we've got a lot of people listening that are thinking about suicide and lots of parents whose sons or daughters they're really worried about. From that day to this, God has launched you in evangelism. You've preached all over America. You've been on all the television programs. And did you ever think that that would come out of your uh, night of receiving Christ? I would have never dreamed that. Um, Three nights after I became a Christian on that Sunday night, there was the big student event. And I got there early, really didn't anticipate that it would be the capacity crowd that it was. I was sitting on about the third row, perfect seat right in the middle of the auditorium. And uh, even though, of course, I'd seen the invitation and the night I got saved, I'd never seen anything like this because when the invitation was given, there were over 300 students that it wasn't just 300 students that came forward and just prayed some prayer. I could sense the brokenness, the, the genuineness of the commitment. And so I turned to my roommate and I said, that's what I'll do with the rest of my life. I just, I just knew that I wanted to help people find the God that I met three days, uh, three days before. But no, I never could have envisioned that it would have led to this. But what I found out is that God oftentimes takes some of the greatest struggles, some of the greatest times of pain and uses those as the greatest tools to reach other people. And I'm hoping that every pastor watching today will have Jay Louder come preach the gospel. He connects. He also reminds us, and Jay, Crossroads has a real soft heart about the suicide issue. We've created the book, Why They Die, Curing the Death Wish in Our Kids. It's available on our e-store. It's the kind of book you need as a parent or an administrator. But I'm so thankful that we have created a book now to distribute free to young people. Now we're asking for our friends to simply send a donation. It's adequate to take care of the cost, 50, 100, 500. Really, we wanna put this book in the hands of not only every Canadian student, but every American student. And we need to do it in Jesus' name. We're gonna find out a lot more about you. Tell people how they can connect with your ministry. Well, we utilize all social media, Twitter, Facebook. Our website's jlouder.com. You can Google uh, us and find us pretty much everywhere. You've written the book, Midnight in Aisle 7. Sometimes God introduces himself outside the church walls. What does that mean? Well, it just means that for a lot of people, especially those people that don't come from a Christian background, that the only place that God can be found is not just within the confines of the walls of a church. That God can be found in the midst of everyday life. That God is wanting to reveal himself to people right now, right here, wherever they are. Regardless of city, state, providence, zip code, God wants to, to reveal himself. His name is Jay Louder. You're going to hear a lot more about him. God's using him all over the world. Our prayers are with you. Thanks.